Do you know that there was a murder case in our country where the investigation was so astonishing that you'll wonder why no movie or web series has been made about it yet? This case is considered one of the most difficult and complex in India's history because there were no clues to identify anyone. Even today, local people praise the police for their work. Hello friends, how are you? Today, I'm talking about the drum case of Kerala. This story begins in the city of Ernakulam, Kerala, where a blue drum or barrel was found lying near a river. It had been there for many months, emitting a mild stench that sometimes became stronger. On the morning of January 8, 2018, some fishermen passing by noticed the stench had become unbearable. They suspected the smell could be coming from a dead body. Instead of enduring the smell any longer, they decided to get rid of the drum. As they approached the drum, the foul smell was so intense that no one could get near it. They called the police, and the officers from the Ernakulam South Police Station arrived on the scene. They dragged the drum out of the bushes and brought it to an open space. It was heavy, so they cut it open to find out why it smelled so bad and why it was so heavy. Inside, they found concrete and bricks. When they broke through the concrete, they saw something a human skeleton. Most of the bones had decomposed, but the skull, part of a leg, and other remains were still intact. This confirmed it was indeed a murder case. The police also found pieces of clothing, a 50 centimeters long clump of hair, a screw, and a washer 6.5 centimeters in length. Additionally, they found three old 500 rupee notes, one 100 rupee note, a silver waist chain, and a garment. All these items were sent to Callum Mission Medical College, a government hospital and medical college. The doctors faced many challenges in identifying the bones. They had to determine whether the bones belonged to a man or a woman, the age of the deceased, and the cause of death. The biggest question was whose bones they were and who the killer was. The bones were rearranged to estimate the height of the person, and the skull was reconstructed to identify the gender. The clump of hair suggested the victim might have been a woman, but since men also have long hair these days, there was some confusion. The bones revealed that the height of the victim was average, leading the police to believe it could be a teenage girl or a boy with long hair. However, further investigation confirmed it was the skeleton of a woman aged between 20 and 25. The post-mortem lasted three days, from January 8th to January 11th, and the police gathered as much information as they could from the bones. But now they had to investigate the other items found in the drum. The three old 500 rupee notes made the police suspect that the murder took place before November 2016, when demonetization occurred. The fact that the drum was discovered in January 2018, but the notes were pre-demonetization, confirmed their suspicion. Some fishermen also reported seeing the drum by the river since September 2016, but they had not paid much attention to it, thinking it might have drifted there. So, by January 11th, the police had enough information to believe that the victim was a woman between 20 and 25 years old, of average build, and that she had been murdered before November 2016. However, they still didn't know who the victim was, why she was killed, or who the murderer was. Despite news spreading everywhere, no missing person report had been filed, and no one came forward to claim that someone from their family had disappeared in 2016. The investigation was led by Officer Sibai Tom, whom locals called Sherlock Holmes because of his ability to solve even the most complex cases. When this drum case came to him, he, too, was puzzled because there were no leads. Identifying the victim felt like climbing a mountain. On January 11, 2018, Sibai Tom received a call from the head of the post-mortem team. The doctor informed him that they had found a screw and a washer in the victim's ankle bone. They suspected the victim had undergone surgery after an accident and that the screw had been used during the operation. The screw had something written on it, but the hospital didn't have a microscope advanced enough to read it. Sibai Tom managed to arrange for a high-resolution camera. Using it, they saw that the screw had Pyatkur written on it, the name of a manufacturer of surgical equipment. The screw also had a batch number. Pyatkur is a well-known company that makes screws and plates for surgeries, especially for bones. After some research, Sibai Tom found out that Pyatkur had only one branch in Kerala, located in Erniculum, which supplied surgical equipment, including screws and plates to the entire region. Sibai Tom and his team went to the branch and inquired about the batch number of the screw. 
the manager informed them that they had been dealing with surgical equipment for years, so they couldn't easily track specific patients unless they had more details, like dates or specific time periods. Sibai Tom remembered that locals had mentioned seeing the drum since September 2016, and the old currency notes further suggested that the murder might have occurred around that time. Based on this, the police asked for all records of screws and washers supplied for ankle surgeries in 2016. After going through their records, the branch found that they had sold six screws and washers of that size in the Urniculum area. The police then visited the homes of the six patients. Three of them were easily found, and they confirmed that they had undergone ankle surgery in 2016, where screws and washers had been used. But the police could not locate the remaining three patients. Eventually, they found two more patients, but the last one, a 54-year-old woman named Shakuntala, was still missing. They didn't even have the address, so they decided to go to the hospital where her operation had taken place. The police went to the hospital and examined all the records, but apart from the name Shakuntala, nothing else was registered, no surname, no address, and no phone number. However, in the visitor's list, the police noticed a name that appeared frequently during Shakuntala's hospital stay. The name was Aswati Damodaram, and her address was also registered. The police went to that address and were told that Aswati was there. The police arrived at her home and asked the woman standing there if she was Aswati. She said, Yes, I am. The police asked, Where is Shakuntala? We need to talk to her. Please call her. At that point, the police were unaware of the relationship between Shakuntala and Aswati. Aswati replied, She is my mother, but I haven't spoken to her since September 2016, and I don't know where she is. The police further questioned, if she's missing, why didn't you file a report? She replied, we didn't get along. I have no connection with her. The police found it strange that the daughter didn't know or care about her mother's whereabouts and hadn't even filed a report. What could be the reason for such hatred? The police began to focus on Aswati and started interrogating her. During the questioning, a story emerged. Aswati had been in love with a boy named Sudhai, but Shakuntala had not approved of the relationship. However, Aswati defied her mother and eloped with Sudhai, and they got married. Aswati and Sudhai had two children together, but in 2016, they got divorced. Shakuntala, who had also separated from her husband Damodaram, was living alone in a rented house and selling lottery tickets to support herself. Aswati owned a scooter, and her mother would use it to sell lottery tickets. After the divorce, Aswati returned to live with her mother, along with her two children. Around that time in 2016, Shakuntala had an accident while riding the scooter. People nearby took her to the hospital, where the doctor said surgery would be required on her left ankle. Meanwhile, Aswati had fallen in love with another man and married him. She and her new husband, Sajid, lived together with her children, no longer staying at her mother's house. Neighbors and everyone else in the area knew that Aswati's second husband was Sajid, and the couple lived together. When the police asked where Sajid was, Aswati explained that she and her family had been living at her mother's house when Shakuntala had her surgery. After a few days, Shakuntala contracted chicken pox, which scared Aswati. Afraid that she or her children might catch it, she left with her kids to stay at a nearby lodge. A few days later, when she returned home, she found that her mother was missing. She asked Sajid about her, and he told her not to worry that she had received treatment and was now in a safe place. Aswati assumed her mother had gone to Delhi, where some of her friends worked as nurses in a hospital. The police asked again, Where is Sajid now? It turned out that the day after Shakuntala disappeared, Sajid had died of a heart attack. The police confirmed at the hospital that his cause of death was indeed a heart attack. With Sajid dead and Aswati knowing nothing, the investigation hit a dead end. The police weren't even sure if Shakuntala was still alive. They sent the bones they had found in a drum for forensic testing and matched the DNA with a blood sample from Aswati. The results confirmed that the bones belonged to Shakuntala. Now that the police knew whose remains they had found, the next challenge was to identify the killer. The question remained, who would want to kill a lottery ticket seller like Shakuntala? The police began questioning neighbors and using informants. Gradually, a story emerged that someone might have killed her out of greed for a lottery prize. However, when the police investigated the lottery agency, they found no evidence of any big lottery win, 
debunking the theory. Then, informants revealed another detail. While neighbors believed Aswati and Sajid were married, in reality, they were living together without being legally married. It also came to light that Sajid was already married to a woman named Sadia, who lived just a short distance away. The police found out that Shakuntala had learned about Sajid's deception and had confronted him, threatening to tell her daughter the truth. The police developed a theory that Sajid had killed Shakuntala to prevent her from revealing his secret to Aswati. Since Sajid was dead, the police began tracking down his friends. Eventually, they found an auto driver who was Sajid's friend. This auto driver made a shocking revelation about what had happened on September 24, 2016. Sanjeet had asked me to get him a drum because he needed to store water at his mother-in-law's house. I brought him a blue drum. The police found this suspicious because there was also a blue drum at the crime scene. The driver said that he had delivered the drum but knew nothing beyond that. The police then questioned some of Sanjeet's friends. One of them revealed that Sanjeet often hung out with two or three friends, so the police brought them in for questioning. They confessed that one day, Sajid had told them that he had put some dead animals in a drum, and together they would make something shiny, like radium, and sell it on the black market. Despite warning Sajid that this was illegal and could get them all in trouble, he insisted, so out of friendship, they helped him. On the night of September 24, 2016, they all went to a location with a truck, left the drum there, and then Sajid told them to leave, saying he didn't want them to get involved. Afterward, they returned home not knowing what Sajid did with the drum. That same night, Sajid withdrew money from an ATM and gave it to them. The police later checked ATM records for that night and confirmed that Sajid had indeed withdrawn money. They released the friends, as they had no knowledge of Sajid's true intentions. One friend thought Sajid needed the drum for storing water, and the others believed he needed help making radium. Since they were unaware, the police let them go. They also questioned Aswati but eventually released her, as she was innocent and had no idea what Sajid was up to. In fact, the person she loved had betrayed her and killed her mother-in-law. At some point, the investigating officer remembered that Sanjit had a wife. The police started searching for her and found out that her name was Sariga. When the police questioned her, another story unfolded. About 30 years ago, Sariga's mother, Vasantha, had eloped and married a boy against her family's wishes. After she got pregnant, her husband kicked her out, as he only wanted to exploit her and had no further use for her. Basantha returned to her family, but they refused to accept her, understandably so after all. They had raised, educated, and cared for her for 22 years, and she had broken all ties for the sake of a boy. Rejected, Basantha went to a bridge to end her life. It was nighttime, and it was raining heavily. A rickshaw driver passing by saw her and stopped her from committing suicide. He took her to his home, where Vasantha told him her whole story. The driver comforted her, and eventually, they fell in love and got married. They had a son, and a few years later, a daughter Sarga was born. When their son grew older, he had an accident that left him with a crippled leg, and he eventually committed suicide due to depression. At 15, Sarga fell in love with a boy named Sanjit. Her parents told her to wait until she turned 18, at which point they would approve of her marriage. When she turned 18, Sarga married Sanjit, and eight years passed. However, she had not been able to conceive. They had been visiting doctors for fertility treatments. Sarga then revealed that she knew her husband had an affair with Aswati and that he loved her children very much. He had even offered to take care of their expenses. Seeing his love for the children, Sarga couldn't stop him. When Aswati's mother began threatening Sajid, he took Sarga and his mother to Aswati's house to convince them to support him. They agreed, as no one else was there to take care of Aswati and her children. In June 2017, Sarga became pregnant through fertility treatment, and in March 2018, she gave birth to a daughter. The police had discovered the drum on January 8, 2018, and two months had passed since the investigation began. By March, Sarga was in the hospital when the police came to question her and Sanjit's family. The family confessed that they had read about the drum case in the newspapers, but had never imagined that Sajid could be the killer. The police now understood why Sanjit didn't want Aswati to find out the truth if she had known. She would have kept her children away from him. Therefore, he killed Aswati's mother, Shakuntala, 
to hide the truth. When asked how Shekintala died, Sanjit said she had a heart attack on September 25, 2016. However, the police suspected Sanjit's death as well, realizing he had become guilty after the murder. After consuming a chemical, he suffered a heart attack and died. This wasn't an accident but suicide. The investigating officer also consulted doctors, who confirmed that chemicals like potassium cyanide can cause heart attacks. So, this is where the story ends. Let us know in the comments how you liked the video. Don't forget to like and share the video, and subscribe to our channel with the bell icon on. See you in the next video.